so many things to love about this movie. Let me just start with the language. Um, I saw a review for Goon from a Let's Talk Movies and the reviewer there had a problem with Jay Baruchel's character in the sense that he just thought that the character was too annoying, his language was too vulgar. Now I didn't have a problem with uh, Jay Baruchel's dialogues in this because, you know, Jay Baruchel actually is also an actor and the co-writer of the movie and the things that he does with his vulgarity, with the vulgarity of his character, they are so creative to me. They are an over-stylized version of how people actually talk and people in real life cuss. And a lot of movies that are R-rated just throw the F-word in there because, you know, if it's an R-rated movie, might as well use the fucking thing. But with Jay Baruchel's dialogues, you know, it's it's rare that I get to see somebody use uh, vulgarity in such an over-the-top, almost artistic manner. It was almost like poetry sometimes. I mean, it was hilarious. But it kind of reminded me of what Tarantino used to do um, in his younger years. And really, there are some one-liners in this that are so hilarious. Oh my god, look at that face, period! Stay classy, J. Baruchel. But what I loved most about Goon uh, is how deliciously male this movie is. And it's chaotic, it's violent, but at the same time it has a lot of heart. And the heart of this movie is Sean William Scott's performance. This is the perfect role for him, and I dare anybody to watch this movie and tell me that Stifler is actually not a good actor. So here's a guy that you know exactly what he's all about. He is a man on a mission, and he is looking for respect. Even if the thing that he does, beating up people, is completely disrespectful. But he does it with the best intentions. He earnestly believes that if he does one thing and he does it well, no matter how demeaning and disgraceful it actually is, he will earn the respect of his peers, the respect of his parents, the love of a good woman, and yada yada yada, all that good shit. And in true Sean William Scott's fashion, you know, this character is supposed to be a little slow on the uptake, you know, not Forrest Gump type slow, but just, you know, a little dense. But there are some scenes in this movie where the character has such insight and such intensity that, you know, it really does make you wonder, like, if is he actually an idiot or is he just pretending to be an idiot because, you know, it's it's easier to be the lovable, lovable brute than to, you know, function at that level of intensity all the time. But really, there are scenes in this where you go like, dude, that was deep. And it seems like that, that kind of make this movie better than the sum of its parts. What I didn't like about Goon is that it has a couple of unresolved subplots, and there's this moment where one of uh, the main character's team uh, teammates gets hurt really, really bad, and the next time you see that character, he's completely fine. And the extent of the injuries that he suffered, you know, it made me believe that the next time I'm going to see that guy, he's probably going to be in a hospital room, but I don't. And that's kind of a chronic condition with Goon that a lot of the team, a lot of the members in uh, the team, they don't really go anywhere, they don't have proper story arcs. And that could be fine, you know, this is uh, a movie about Sean William Scott's character, but at the same time, you know, most of these guys in this team have pretty good introductions and they're pretty funny, they're pretty interesting and you know, I, I would have liked to know more about them, I would have liked them to have some kind of emotional payoff at the end. But all in all, I just enjoyed Goon so much. It's a sports movie unlike any other sports movie that I saw. Like Moneyball, you know, I, I was expecting another kind of underdog story but this really surprised me. And actually, you know, if you liked Super, I think you're going to like this. It's kind of like what would happen if the guys who did the Crank movies did a sports movie, but one that has a bit more heart.